Hello, I actually have five minutes to myself. So you've took Daisy to the playground, so I thought it'd be fun to do a little get ready with me and just talk about third trimester. I am 36, almost 37 weeks. <sighs> and I haven't done any updates since we moved to North Carolina. So I just thought it'd be fun to get together and do our makeup and chat, so let's do it. I feel like we have a lot to catch up on, so let's just get started. I'm trying to be a good pregnant person. Here you go. She's large. She's in charge. I have my little red raspberry leaf tea. I put some lemon in it and some agave in it to make it like a little bit more palatable, but we'll see. And then I have my hospital bag. It's this Lululemon bag that I've used honestly for like a beach bag, a travel bag, a carry-on bag, all the bags. Literally a grocery bag. Love this thing. It's got a couple things in it. These to collect breast milk if I start leaking beforehand. I don't know. A bra. I like the birthing. What's this called? gown in case I don't want the hospital gown. A fun little portable charger. I'll show you. I got it off Amazon. I'll link it. it. Has like three little ports. And then I have like a hair clip and some baby clothes. So we need to bulk it up a bit but I'm getting there. Okay let's do our makeup and talk. This is the moisturizer I always start with. It's from Kiehl's. It's my favorite. I love it so much. It's a gel, oil-free gel cream. Looks like this. Feels kind of like a primer. So I like it. The weather here has been so nice. It's literally like cloudless and 60s and beautiful and the leaves are falling. When we first moved here in July, it was just like an absolute H-hole of heat and death. It was so hot, it was disgusting. I mean, we had a pool to go to, so thankfully that really saved us. But I have never been so excited for fall. Also, I'm excited that it's like actual transition into fall. It's not just like a, now it's 20 degrees in Ocean City kind of thing. So we love that. This is almost out. It's the glow screen from Supergoop. I got the darker one by accident, Golden Hour. And I used to mix it with the lighter one and it was like perfect. Now I only have this one left, so we're gonna just use it. My tan is fading, but my spirits are not. So I have not updated my newsletter in a long time just because I've been so busy. And by busy, I mean laying on the couch, wondering when this baby's coming out. I've just been really exhausted, honestly, and I'm trying to lean into that and not be mad at myself for not doing more. But we've been trying to transition into a move new job for Steve um, and my sister moved here and started a new job for herself transitioning Daisy just all of it has been a lot to do while pregnant and so I haven't really gotten around to doing any of the creative things that I wanted to do which is fine everything has a season my manager is giving an apartment tour great please don't come this way they're coming this way okay bye okay then in August we were driving and there was a bad storm and a tree fell on my car and totaled my car <laughs> that was traumatic we're all okay, thankfully. I put it on Instagram, I think on stories or something. It just, it was a lot. Our car was completely totaled. I had to go to the dealership and get a new car. We ended up leasing cause like the rates to buy a car were out of control. And I'm sad because we came here with one car hoping to get a second car for Steve, not hoping to have to now replace two cars. But that's the reality. So, <laughs> so it was just like kind of a chaotic couple of months. But I am very, very much in the end of my pregnancy. I'll be 37 weeks on Tuesday. I thought it would just be fun to chat about that, talk about updates, my birth plan, all of that stuff. So as you may have known, I'm not sure. I had a C-section with Daisy. I had a horrible labor and delivery experience. I never really talked about it online because honestly, I saw a therapist for a little bit, uh, but I don't know if I spent enough time really unpacking it like for myself. Like there's still things that I go back to and I just didn't feel ready to put it online. So three years later, still have it. Maybe someday, uh, but it's just like a lot. So I'm definitely not gonna do it now before I have a second baby. But this pregnancy has been really healing and just really great in general. It's a lot less uncomfortable, a lot less sickness, a lot less anxiety, not in a pandemic. Actually getting to experience being pregnant around other people has been really nice and just isolating. So all of that has been really great. I think I was at my like 31 week appointment Basically after 20 weeks, I think it is, they start measuring your fundal height, which is like the height from the top of your uterus to your pubic bone. Medical professionals, correct me if I'm wrong. Around 20 weeks, I think, it's supposed to like line up with what week you are pregnant or be around there, give or take like a couple weeks, right? I think it was like 31 weeks I go in, I'm like randomly up six pounds out of nowhere, not changing anything about my diet, not really gaining any weight like crazy. And my fundal height is like 36 weeks and I'm like, huh. So they send me for a growth ultrasound 
at the MFM place. Um, they're like, oh yeah, he's measuring like a couple weeks ahead and a couple pounds already and all this stuff. And I was like, okay, cool, 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 six, 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 six. And based on like my calculations of my cycle and all of that stuff, I pretty much like have a good idea of when I conceived this child and when I think this child is due. And we all know due dates are guesstimates and all that stuff. But personally, I think I'm about a week earlier than how they like measured me to be when I got my initial ultrasounds when we were still living in LA. But because I switched when I got to New Jersey to my old OB, they didn't update it because it had been like, they basically go off the initial ultrasound and all that stuff. So I was like, that's fine. Because personally, I actually did not want to be pushed by them to go sooner. So it's like, if they had actually switched my due date to what I think it is, then I feel like I'd be feeling the pressure to induce get a c-section or like make a decision sooner so i'm grateful that medically i have like a little more time than i personally think that i do i have something called polyhydramnios which is basically like extra fluid extra amniotic fluid floating around in there and i had it with daisy the reason that they decided to induce me just looking back i wish i would have like known more and maybe advocated for myself a little bit more but that's neither here nor there but this baby is definitely has like more fluid than I did with Daisy is measuring bigger and all of that stuff. Also three years older than I was with her and I've had a c-section so all these things go into play when originally I was like I'm gonna try for a v-back and hope for the best and all that stuff. I'm using this Jones Road powder. I put it under my eyes to set my concealer, the Tarte concealer that I use. I like it. I still like the Laura Mercier better. They sent me this to see if I would like it and I do. I would probably go back to Laura Mercier once this is done. Also, if my phone just keeps sliding down and I have to keep fixing it, I'm so sorry. It's just like the least professional YouTube channel that ever existed. Each week at my midwife appointment, my fundal height has just been getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Like I went yesterday or two days ago and I'm 36 weeks. I was measuring 47, my fundal height. I'm like, is there a secret twin in there? Am I gonna have two of you? And I doubt it at this point, but also, you know, you never know. This is the NYX Professional Makeup Micro Brow Pencil. I use this all the time. I love it, it's my favorite. I started the outline of my eyebrows over there because I don't have my tiny little mirror. And I just don't trust my phone. Let's see if I can fill in the rest for you while we chat. Let's see, okay. No, I'm just gonna go do my eyebrows and come back. I'm gonna use this Rare Beauty bronzer stick because I really love it. So now what I have to do is go back on Tuesday and see how he's growing, see how my fluid's doing, and see what they recommend. I think at this point, my hope is still that I will go into labor on my own. And if I do, I'll try to have a VBAC. If I don't go into labor on my own, I will most likely do a repeat C-section at the time that they recommend. Just because I had a horrible experience with induction, I know that's not everyone. I know some people love their induction, you know, and this is not, a, this is no commentary on anything. There is no morality around how you give birth, you know, and it shouldn't be this like guilt thing. You should be doing what's best for you and for your baby. And for me, that might end up being a repeat C-section because I also don't want to be induce increase my risk of rupture and then on top of that have potentially end up getting a c-section anyway as well hard as major surgery is as the c-section recovery is i know what to expect this time will have help i'm not in a pandemic um it's just a totally different place you know so that's my current plan so if you could pray that i a go into labor on my own and b have a successful be back but if not c that I would have some peace around just getting a repeat c-section. The other thing is my iron is very low, my platelets are very low, which freaks me out. Again, don't google it. So I know that kind of factors into my decision making as well because I just want to be safe and to be here for my baby. This is the Jones Road Lip Crayon in nude pink. I really like these. This is my pink lip crayon. Anyways, I hope I don't bleed to death. Sorry, is that too dark? That's way too dark. So with that being said, I'm basically kind of just waiting out this last part of pregnancy. I've been taking it really easy, allowing myself to rest. You know, I feel bad for Daisy because I feel like I don't have the energy that I typically have. And the Ilia Mascara Limitless Slash, it's my very, very, very favorite. But she and I have been doing like a preschool program together, so that's been really good. And I'm just trying to take in this time with her, just me and her left, which is like so bittersweet. I've had a lot of emotional moments about that. She's really excited for her brother and I am too. You know, I can't wait for him to be here. I can't believe I'm having a boy. It's so wild to me. Steve set up his little changing table. We still have to get a bassinet, so that would be helpful. Other than that, like we're pretty much ready for him to get here any time. Also, I've been part of this research study at the university, so I get to go in for these extra sonograms because they're trying to develop like a sonogram ultrasound tool that can be used in places like Zambia areas where there isn't as much access to ultrasound technology and care that comes with that. So I go in and they use like their little device that they're building 
and they do like a blind ultrasound and then they do like a full ultrasound and then I get some 3D pictures. So let me show you some of them because they're really cute. Hold on. Look at this chunky little face. Look at this chunky little face. The chunkiest cheeks. Ted is measuring 42 weeks. <laughs> Please pray for me. And that's the uterus T. No. All of that to say, I feel really confident in my care team. I feel really confident with where we are. Much better than the Bumble F place in New Jersey where I gave birth that was terrifying, a nightmare land. And I'm just really excited to have the opportunity to snuggle another little baby, you know? There were so many years and so many of you have been here with me through that, you know, through the not knowing and through wondering if I'd ever have kids. Get it together, Kate. So it's not lost on me how exciting this is, how much of a gift it is that I get to do it again. Cause I know that not everyone's story goes this way, you know, even with prayers and hope and all the interventions. So I'm really, really grateful. And I just can't wait to share once he's here. So I hope you're doing well. And if you could just pray for me in these last few weeks for my sanity, for my physical and mental well-being, for peace and discernment, in whatever the best decision is. I know there's no right decision, but whatever feels like it's gonna bring me the most peace and be best for our family. I would just love prayers for a safe and healthy delivery for me and for the baby. And yeah. So let me see if I can give you kind of a bump pick. I mean, it's large. It's large. I can't even button this shirt. I mean, are we kidding? It's, you get it. There it is, there's the bump. Okay, that's it. Love you, bye.